Hello, my fellow Americans. We are going to talk today about the Roe vs. Wade fallout, and I'm going to react to Brenda once again spewing her nonsense. Okay, let's go. So Brenda is again going out here and saying some very unbiblical things while also claiming to be Christian. Now, one of the two things that makes you a Christian is one, you believe in Jesus Christ, that he came to die for our sins on the cross, that he was fully man, fully God, and that's why his sacrifice meant anything. Because he was that pure, he had that pureness to him, right? And then the second thing <laughs> is that the Bible is is the God-breathed, God-inspired, whatever word you want to use, basically this is his message to us how you're supposed to live how i want you to see things you use the bible to make decisions to figure out what's right or wrong excuse me to know what you're supposed to do in your life it's guidance for prayer it's all of this stuff right so for me of course looking at brenda who says she's a christian and it's perfectly okay with the fact that people want to kill their kids does not track. Okay, she says a lot of things that are wrong. And so we're just going to watch this and I'm just going to pause it and react and tell you what I think. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see if I can do this without yelling. <laughs> All right, here comes Brenda. So there's like nuance in all of these and no one wants to be used as the example of why we should be making these really hard decisions as a society. It's okay, so no one, Brenda, Brenda, <laughs> no one wants to be used as the example of why we should be making the decision for abortion because we all know instinctively and they are now admitting that that means it's the end of a life. People, there are people in the comments even. Let me see if I can find them, find her again. It was like a top comment. Let me see if I can find her. Here it is. As a black woman born into a low-income family, I am glad my mother did not abort me. She was being coerced into doing it, but decided not to as she still remembered the pain and guilt from her first abortion. She gave me a chance to live, and as a millennial who has established quite the lucrative career in finance, I'm helping my extended family get out of poverty. We are all doing well now. Generally speaking, Americans aren't born into a caste system. So to think this way, we are born ultimately the way we die is disheartening. And this is also a good point into this, guys. People don't want to be used as that example because that example ultimately means we can't change anything in our lives. That our lives are what they are and yet it will never be different. And that is not true in America. What has always been true in America is that you can come here, have absolutely nothing and turn into a millionaire based on your choices and what you do. Now, again, this is the, this is the thing for me. They're like, well, nobody wants to be the example of that. Well, of course not, because your example would mean that I shouldn't be here, that I should be dead. Of course not, Brenda. Because we all instinctively know what it means. Let's, okay, so let's keep going. It's just the black and white that I feel you are trying to bring me into is this personhood thing, which is it is not right based on when or how I decide when a personhood is applicable to the fetus. Whereas, oh, sorry, I keep getting lost. Of course you do. No, it's all good. Yeah, it's just, it's the hardest question to start I think, with. I think maybe because you care so much about these it's other just issues. That, okay, like really the way that I would frame this is by saying that this moment right here to me is a waste of time and I don't... All right, so here again, we're talking about the person heard part, right? Because this, because really what it comes down to is this, do you believe that a person in the womb is a person or do you not all right i have several bible verses that show personhood begins in the womb that is what the bible says it doesn't say first breath like she just lies here and says that it does 
Okay. Many times in the Bible, nations, well, not many, but I have an example of one where nations were predicted from the child that was in the womb, not the one that was born already. Many times they refer to children in the womb as being crafted by God. Many times the writers of the Bible, you know, God is saying to us, the child in the womb is important. Child in the womb matters. It is a person. So no matter where you are in your, you know, womb journey here in your beginning start, um, you are important. You matter. I have a plan for you, all of that. And it, and it's all throughout the Bible. We're supposed to care for life. We're supposed to care for orphans and all this stuff. That's part of what we believe as Christians. And so for her to say that personhood doesn't matter because other people have problems with other things is ridiculous and also not Christian. You have to understand that Christianity cares about life and all, and all the spectrum. We are still commanded ourselves to care for orphans, to care for people who, who have, who are not in a justice situation. Blah. We are cared for like widows, people who can't get what they need. Okay. So our main thing is to make sure that these kids have something. Uh, part of my conversation with an extended member of my family was the, of course, always well, they don't care about the kid once it's out here. And that's not true. I've told many people, please don't have your abortion. Please just give your child to me. My husband and I will raise that kid as our own. I've said this over and over and over again. It doesn't cost, if you don't go, if you yourself just go to a lawyer and sign over your parental rights, it costs about $1,000. Okay. And we have always been ready, okay, to do whatever we needed to, to make sure we now have the parental rights to that child and it's now our kid. That's all you have to do to adopt a kid. All right. People instead, they go and they give them to adoption agencies or they go and they give them to like the government takes them instead. Okay. You don't have to do things that way. But that is the only thing that people on this side can see. They don't want to see other options. They don't want to see other things that can happen. All they want to see is like, it's pregnancy is bad. That's all they want to see. Okay, let's keep going. Don't mean to say that in any degrading way to anyone sitting at this okay. table. Or anyone okay. who believes in the importance of the validity of trying to figure out when life begins or when we're honoring that. But... For me, it becomes almost irrelevant because of all of the other issues that are piled on top of this, where I see so many people in the anti-abortion camp voting against it, acting against things that would make this place more viable for life. So if we talk about, okay, I believe that... Okay, so she sees people voting against things. I don't know what she's talking about there. Mostly because our welfare system nowadays is you almost 100% can get everything you need. I think the thing that's the hardest right now is housing. But churches are filling that in. There's lots of different ways to get housing. Okay. To me, that's an excuse. Well, there's all these other issues around it that matter more. No. Are you killing a person or aren't you? That's what matters. The rest can be figured out in some way like I I <laughs> if you give me a scenario I can figure it out for you how's that you can leave it in the comments and I will brainstorm it with you but to say that a person doesn't have value or personhood or whatever you want to say because it'd be hard for them to be here is pretty disgusting like I that's my that's that's where I'm at with that like at least four Bible verses, that is something. And God also orders an abortion in the Bible. But even that, I would not want to hang my hat on the Okay, and then that's a lie. Those are both lies. Life doesn't begin at first breath, and God does not order abortions. The examples that they use, again, are wartime examples that can't be used because that's not what's going on. These women are not in a war. They're not fighting for their lives. They're having a baby, a natural, normal phenomenon. 
that these women cannot get, get into their heads is normal for them to do and your body is created for. All right. A female body working normally with nothing wrong with it naturally is there to have children. Uh, just this idea that because I don't want to do something means people can, people have to die. I can do whatever I want is extremely selfish. And you know what it reminds me of is two and three year olds. I want it. I want it. It doesn't matter. Okay. These, these people are children. They don't understand life. They don't understand the world. And it's very hard for me to take them seriously and not just laugh at them. Like I would do a two or three year old and just say, well, I'm sorry. You can't have it. You're just not going to get it because this is how they act. because these are all like moralistic moralistic ideas they're not actual actually provable they cannot be concrete it's a matter of your own and then this is the other problem i have with her like i said before part of being a christian is that you use the bible as the part of the way that you make your decisions the bible and prayer the bible is our guide what we're supposed to do how we're supposed to act how we're supposed to treat people where to move, how to move through society, because it has information for that, how to deal with our money, how to deal towards people, et cetera, like this. So for her to say, I don't want to use the Bible, Brenda, you are not a Christian. You, you never in any way present Christianity as the way it is. Okay. So for me, whenever I look at this, she says to people out here, I am a Christian, but I am pro-choice because of all these other reasons you can want to fix all these other reasons like i want to fix all these other reasons if somebody can't afford their kid like i said give your kid to me i'll take them there are churches all over the country that are working with people who have had a child and are poor there are couples out there who want to keep their kid but they're like we can't feed another kid they go apology of church is the biggest one that i know of Okay, they do it. They do it all the time. There are multiple families. There are many children alive because they go, they stand in front of the front of the abortion clinic and say, we will care for you. We will care for your child. We will help you. We will do this. Okay. And they are just one of the biggest examples I know of that make that difference. People like Brenda will not acknowledge that exists. And she goes on, just, just listen to what she says. So with all of that being said, if you believe that life begins at conception, then I want to see what you are doing to make sure that no one has to have an abortion that they didn't want to have. Okay. And then they're right there. Oh, well, what are you doing? Well, we're doing everything, everything in part of my discussion with my extended family. I shared with them abortion.org's information about who adopts the most and it's males and it's Christians that you can't make this stuff up. The people like this simply refuse to see the truth. And that's why it's so hard to talk to them. Everything else is emotional rhetoric and that's all it is. They just want you to feel bad. So you'll let them do what they want to do which just so happens in this case to be kill their children because of poverty, because of all these other issues that are happening and that personal moral stance in that case is not as valid to me because it doesn't actually answer any of the questions that are going to help us decrease abortion numbers or even eradicate it if that's your dream. So I think we have to keep going. I think we have to get into that conversation about how we, um, help women who are being coerced and support women who are in low-income situations or abusive relationships to make sure that they are not coerced into abortion. I think abortion and coercion go hand in hand. And a lot of the work of the pro-life movement, I'm not sure how familiar are with it, but is supporting women who are in difficult situ- situations so that they are empowered to not turn to violence and not have to have an abortion, but choose life and protect their children provide them financial material care, you know, thousands of pregnancy resource centers, providing that financial material care, um, supporting women, giving them the help that they need, connecting them to the resources that they, they deserve. That's all very crucial. But I do think it's essential to establish 
a starting point here because the reality is we're living in a society where abortion is legal, mm -hmm. where there are 800,000 children killed by abortion. I know you don't like calling them children, but they're human beings like you and me, and they are just younger and totally defenseless. So it's this ultimate ageism or might makes right that the more powerful, the born people, are deciding the fate of these pre-born people. And so you don't like calling them persons, I, I know as well as from what you've said. So I do think I would like to understand your position. When do, you're saying personhood only starts at 21 weeks because of viability. So I'm going to stop it right there, guys. I'm going to leave the link in the, in the description for you to go listen to this it's two and a, it's almost three hours long and i'm going to try and finish it but basically that's all i really wanted to say about this this thing's almost 20 minutes long so i'm gonna to have to just end it here thank you for joining me my fellow americans if you are just joining me and you want to see me talk about more things like this go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like i said i'd love to hear from you in the comments we can really this idea that there are no solutions for people, that when something horrible happens, the answer is then to do something else horrible. This is, this is bad logic, guys. Really bad logic. And I know that when something horrible happens, you're not thinking logically, but the people around you should be. They should be helping you get through this while also making sure you're doing the right thing. Because when you come out of your emotions, you're going to be like, why did I do that? And I know because I've been, you know, I've made choices based on my emotions before and really mess things up. So you cannot use your emotions to make decisions. And people on Brenda's side, that's all they want to do. They want to use their emotions to make decisions. If I used their concept, their concept is, is if I don't want to do it, I shouldn't have to, right? If I used that concept but and, and applied it to anything else, it wouldn't work. I don't want to pay taxes. I shouldn't have to. I don't want to um, obey the law. I shouldn't have to, right? And it should be fine. I should not get any consequences from it because that's what they want also. They want no consequences. So where do you fall on this, guys? I'll leave it there. Thanks for joining me. Remember to pray. And read your Bible. Oh, I lost my mouse. All right, there it is. Okay, so remember to pray and read your Bible. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.